Welcome to the Naked Life Podcast, where stripping is a way of life. I'm your host, Lo Wentworth. Shall we get started? Because I know you're ready. Welcome back to the Naked Life Podcast. So we're doing a bonus episode today, and I'm excited about this topic because I talk about boundaries a lot. And the holiday season's coming up. I mean, Christmas is this weekend. Come on, universe, why does a holiday have to be on the weekend? Like, we like long, long weeks off of work without taking paid vacation. But it's got me realizing how much what healthy boundaries look like and who those I coach through for establishing boundaries and being more at home with themselves and their identity. And then even going back on my own journey of how I've established and created boundaries within a family. So holiday season, everyone, I want to say everyone, but most of the glamorous side of social media is like, oh, yay, holidays. I love the holidays this. I love the holidays that. Not everyone loves the holidays. And so if you don't love the holidays, I see you, I feel you, and I am right there with you. And so I've had to learn over the years and even got on a crash course on how to set boundaries with family this year and what that looks like and how to maintain them and what works for me. And getting to that place where I'm going to, like, enjoy the holidays as much as I can what it lo- as what it looks like for me. So enjoying the holidays on what it looks like for me, what type of boundaries to set that I've done in the past that I've realized has worked well, and giving those an opportunity who are just like, enough is enough. Like, you no longer want to feel dread going to a family Christmas or 12. You no longer want to be susceptible to Aunt Betty's little passive-aggressive digs about you or about how amazing their kids are and whatever bullshit comes out and that is just meant to trigger people and showcase how great they are when you know they're not that great based on the experiences that you've had with this person or the family Also, if you feel like you're the black sheep, the scapegoat of the family, the one who is just like, you know, this dysfunction is really fucked up and it feels like people pile on, I got you. So one of the first things I want to say is those who are like, have had enough, this is enough, I want to change how I'm going to experience this holiday season, even though it's right around the corner, but I don't know where to go. I don't know how to start it. I don't know how to create boundaries. Like, it's so overwhelming. Like, la. And so what I want to tell you is just breathe. The fact that you made the decision that enough is enough, that you want to establish these boundaries, and you want to do it today because you're wanting to make your holiday season enjoyable or whatever it is more enjoyable with your life, whether it's setting boundaries at work or family, with friends, whatever that looks like for you. And the first thing I want to say is just kudos to you. This is your first step in towards no longer self-abandoning yourself. So I was talking to my coach and I'm creating this Unstoppable Boundaries course that will be released in January and all the link is, everything is in the bio to sign up. Like you want to sign up for the live portion and quite frankly, you'll want to sign up for Sacred Validations, which is like the building stone, the mastermind that I will be hosting in spring now because I've realized Boundaries is such a pivotal foundational point for everyone that in order to get everything sacred validation is offering, you have to understand boundaries, how they work for you, and really have the core boundary of no established in your repertoire. But it got me thinking about establishing boundaries and becoming unstoppable with your boundaries and being able to say no and being comfortable with saying no. And for the holiday season, you don't actually necessarily have to set a boundary. If you are freaking out, overwhelmed, and you have this thing where you, it's just like you don't want to endure any conflict because it's just very easy for your family to use you as a scapegoat and then just pile on and it just gets too messy mess and you just don't want to be there and I know that some of this is self-fulfilling like you know what's coming and this is just like past experiences and past trauma built up in your body which is fine but all you have to do is just observe you don't even need to set the boundary of I'm going to say no to Aunt Betty or I'm not available for this conversation because if it starts giving you hives and like in this panic mode, like it, your chest starts coming in, just set the intention to witness 
what comes up during the holiday season with your family. Be curious about where your edge is, what didn't feel good, what did feel good, because this is a, a foundational piece that will help you in the future to create and establish boundaries. And that is all you have to do. You don't even have to set a boundary. You don't. You can just be like, I just want to witness and observe. It's like collecting data to know where you need to go and approve, like workouts. Where is your baseline? So this is you just discovering what your baseline is. And that is perfectly fine. There is nothing wrong with that. In fact, you're probably setting yourself up better For other people who are just like, I'm going to go in this holiday season. I'm going to say no to Aunt Betty. And I'm just going to be like, da, 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 da. And that doesn't happen because it doesn't feel good in your nervous system. And it, it creates this fight or flight mode. When you aren't quite ready for that, it might be more detrimental, cause more trauma and more conflict. Instead, if you would just go in and be like, I'm going to be curious. I'm going to observe. I'm going to see what... I am and I'm not available for. And that's it. That is it. Now, if you want a little bit more, you can go in being like, okay, I know this side of the family. I don't really want to deal with all the Aunt Bettys on the side. But if you want something more and you're going, you know you're going to this family event, you can always set, I'm going to go to the family event that starts at noon and then I'm going to leave around two o'clock and do that. That is a boundary in itself. You're going, you're enjoying the family or you're witnessing what is coming up for you or you're just observing whatever obligation you feel like you need to do at the time to appease the masses so that way you don't get more conflict or more pile on going on. That's okay. I have many, many times either not shown up to a family event and said, I'm like, I've told my parents I'm not coming. There's someone there. I don't, I really don't want to go. I don't want to go there. There is, was another one of my relatives wasn't going to be there. And I'm like, well, if he's there, I will go. But otherwise, I'm not going. That was great. Perfectly fine. I didn't get really any pushback. Hardly any. I was just like, I'm not going. I don't want to go. Which is very interesting when you create this energy of like directness of saying like not happening. And then there was another time where I was, during Thanksgiving, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go for a couple hours and then I'm going to leave. And I just ended up staying longer than those couple of hours because I was enjoying the time with the people I was with. So that gave me the wiggle room when it came to about, I don't know, like two o'clock was my cutoff. I'm like, nope, I'm just going to say because I'm enjoying the time. I'm enjoying hanging out with some of my cousins and connecting with them and playing games. And so that is also where flexibility comes in with a boundary. So if you notice that you're enjoying your time and you don't feel like you're ready to leave yet, you don't have to. You can always be like, okay, I want to stay here for a little longer, but as soon as I feel like I'm ready to vamanos, I vamanos. And you can do that. So it's like you can either just witness and see where the lines are that you need to draw to start building the identity and strong foundation of you and creating those strong foundational boundaries. You can set a time, be like there's a time limit. I'm going to show up between this time and this time and go from there. That is all okay. You can even eat you can even look back and set the boundary of like, I know when Aunt Betty does this, I'm not available for this. You can just say no. And that's it. No is a complete sentence. You can even go back through like the scenarios that you've had from the past that are probably repeatable. So you can know, walk yourself through on how you're going to react, what is going to happen. So that way you have this game plan. So a lot of the anxiety that comes up when you're dealing with family and you're learning how to create boundaries and building this identity of you and learning to validate yourself is also understanding that you become overwhelmed and you freak out because you don't know what your game plan is to shift. You know what the game plan is if it stays course, like if you're going to be repeating history, but you no longer want to be repeating history because you're like, enough is enough. You can write down or even talk out whatever works for you. Sometimes I journal, sometimes it's voice. I had a friend who she didn't really like journaling, but she would use her voice app on her phone and listen back and that would help her. It's the same process as journaling. So you can be like scenario X happens. So when scenario X happens, this is what I would do instead. 
like this is what I did in the past when scenario X happened, this is what I would do instead. So one of the things was with me and different conversations with family members that I'm like, okay, when some of my family members get on the pettiness train about whoever it is, someone in town at work creating all of this drama, talking from a victimhood, and it's just a repeat scenario about how this person is awful, like why can't they have their shit together, like they're just doing this on purpose, yada, 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 I'm not, I'm a victim in this, like I don't know how to fix it, which is bullshit shit, you know how to fix it, but you know what I mean, they go on that pettiness train, that judgmental train of this person, and it's just repeat. And so I would tell whatever family member, I'm like, really? Like, what's going to change? Are you going to change? Or are you not going to change? Because you've talked about this. This is like the third or fourth time. Like, I'm not available for this anymore. Like, you either kind of like shit or get off the pot type of situation. And if they still are talking about that same subject where I'm like, seriously, can we move on? Like, this is, this is really boring. Really, really boring. I just walk away. I walk away. So if there's a conversations that you know that are going to c- come up, and I know that the traditional is you don't talk about politics, you don't talk about religion, you don't talk about money, like that triad there is like the golden triad you don't touch with family because if you touch with family then it explodes so if one of those topics comes up or any other topic that you know that's going to be coming up maybe aunt betty is just going to be saying shit about her sister and her sister's children or sister-in-law or brother-in-law whatever it may be you can just simply walk away from that conversation you're like, oh, Aunt Betty's talking about this. I'm just going to walk away. You don't even need to say anything because I've seen things where people are just like, well, when someone is doing that, like, how does that make you feel? Or something that turns around like, oh, okay, well, what would you do in that situation? I don't know if that's a good one, but like, do you feel better for saying that, like getting that off your chest? Or if they're like in your face talking shit about you, how you're an awful, horrible person because they're just trying to make themselves feel better you can just simply walk away you don't even need to say anything you can just walk away and if they chase you and are coming after you all you simply have to say is i'm not available for this conversation and just leave you can either make sure you drive to the location so you can just physically leave if they just continue on or you can just go to another room that has successfully supported me in the path on my own journey of creating boundaries before this year that I got the uber crash course on how to create boundaries and maintain boundaries and be okay with it because it's me putting myself first because I've had enough of enough of trying to prove my worth to people who really don't give a shit about me. And so in the past, when different conversations have come up, I just simply walked out. Walked out of the room. I really don't care. They, yes, whoever it may be may make a comment about it. You do not have to respond. You're just like, yeah, I just don't want to talk about it anymore. So I left. Or I'm not available for this conversation. So I just, I took myself out of the situation. That's okay. I mean, this holiday season, a lot of times people give these checklists of what you can do to do with family. But a lot of it is, especially if you're coming from an environment where you learned to be a people pleaser to survive. Or you learned to be, I call this chameleon, because I don't really identify as a people pleaser. Because from my understanding of what people pleasers do, it's very similar of like surviving in the chameleon, like becoming a chameleon to keep myself safe, to make sure that I was putting other people's needs first and doing scenarios of 10 steps ahead ahead to keep me okay. Instead of like with people pleasers, from my understanding, is like you're doing these things so that people will love you and acknowledge you and validate you. And I was doing the things that are similar to people pleasers so that like, I guess I wouldn't have to be seen. So I didn't have to deal with the drama, the chaos that would come if I looked the wrong way or breathed the wrong way. But either way, like, I also, people pleasers, if you're listening to this, I completely understand you because it's not, it's similar in it was a defense mechanism you've learned how to survive. And it's also similar in the fact of how you're unprogramming yourself of putting people's needs before your own. You may have liked it, so you would get love and acceptance. I did it so I could survive and just be seen and just coexist. Me, my love and acceptance came from, like, achievement. But talking about that with everyone who like boundaries and family it is okay for you to acknowledge that you have these people pleasing traits and tendencies and 
being aware of it and not beating yourself up for repeating some of those and still doing that this holiday season. Remember, you can look at this as data collection, knowing your baseline for where you are at, just like if you're going to start a workout, new workout program, if you're going to start a new eating program, if you're going to start I don't a new job, like you all know, need, you need to know your baseline so you can watch and see how you grow and where you need to tweak what's working, what's not working. That's all you need to do and give yourself grace. Again, you can always play out those scenarios of the past and what you would do instead that would support you. That wouldn't be such a shock to your nervous system. One of the big things that I have been learning about trauma and everything is like a lot of the boundaries that I've had to learn is reprogramming my nervous system. And this next year, I'm going more in depth on how to do that so I can teach and guide people. But I know enough tools to teach and guide you what that looks like for your nervous system and being okay. And one of those is doing that journaling exercise of writing out the scenarios and what you would do next. Because then you feel safe in that. You know what your next game plan is and to try it out and see what happens. You're creating calm in your nervous system you're creating a plan in your nervous system so if there's a completely new scenario that comes up that hijacks your nervous system that is fine because it's like comes in out of left field observing it and bringing awareness to it whereas before if you didn't do like i know aunt petty is going to i don't know try to steal the jello like she does every year because she hates jello and for whatever reason that that drives you nuts so you're just like all right i know him but he's gonna try to steal the jello so i'm gonna go in and get my own piece of jello and hide it these are really interesting scenarios coming out guys and so then you hide it and so you have your piece of jello and when she finds the other jello and chucks it or does whatever she does to it like you're you won't have this shock to the nervous system because you'll have your jello you've re reestablish the story of establishing that like you're getting jello i guess it's because traditionally one of the traditional holiday dishes for christmas time is rainbow jello and it is my favorite and so i ensure like when i've made it that i get that square like i just want a square and everyone else can have the rest of the pan i don't care people may think that is selfish i think that is self-preservation because it's like i'm making jello i enjoy making this jello but i don't want to eat it all i just want a square and i want to share it with everyone to experience that That is also a boundary within yourself and showing yourself love and self-abandonment. Because where in the past, if I made this jello, I felt like everyone else had to have a piece before I could have a piece. And a lot of times the jello either like melted or there wasn't any jello left. So how does that help me? It doesn't. It makes me feel shittier about myself. It makes me feel like I don't belong, that no one loves me. That was the old me. And so that was like a new boundary that I created with myself. But I didn't know that was my baseline until I observed until I witnessed I was doing this and I was like okay next time I'm going to change and try it this way and see what happens and that's all you have to do this holiday season you can say no if there's something you straight up do not want to do you can say no you don't even need to show up you can just say no that is also an option It just depends on where you are at in your journey of setting your boundaries. You can be like, I want to change. I don't know where to change. Just do the baseline observing. And if you see different pockets of like, oh, I'd rather like, I don't want to go to this event, then say no. Or you could be like, okay, I'm witnessing, but you know, it feels good if I'm just like, all right, I'll just be here for four hours instead of staying the whole night. And then really just doing the journaling of scenarios and playing out and creating that game plan so you feel in control this holiday season. So you feel like you're taking care of yourself and you're starting to release that self-abandonment programming you were taught from a very, very young age. That's all you have to do. And just see how it changes this holiday season. And let me know. Comment on my Instagram or even leave reviews here on the whatever platform you're listening to your podcast to. Because I want to know, I want to hear, I want to see like you implementing and learning to trust yourself again and just witnessing it. Because we're all a part of this journey together. 
there are a lot more of us who have challenging times with family. And I think we need to acknowledge that, you know, even if you have challenging times with family during the holiday season, there can be pockets of moments that you love and enjoy that can outshine the negative. That's where the shift happens. All starts with deciding you've had enough you're no longer available for abandoning yourself and starting to learn how to create that strong foundation of creating boundaries within yourself and and with others and establishing those and creating that baseline. That's it. And I'm launching the Unstoppable Boundaries. It's going to be a self-study, but there will also be a live component. So if you click the link in this bio here, you can sign up for the self-study, which will be released January 16th, or you can sign up for the live portion, which will walk you through for three to four weeks, One, not one-on-one with me, but like as a group that we have conversations as you're coming up and implementing doing the work. And that's all the link in the bio. And with that, I will see you on Thursday for another episode. I'm so excited, you guys. Enjoy the holiday season. Let me know if you also have any questions about boundaries and setting them and navigating it with the family. And yeah, I'll see you on Thursday. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Naked Life Podcast. Please remember to rate, review, subscribe to this podcast and share with all your friends.